Hey, Tori, how are you doing? I am so fabulous. I can't even begin to complain. And how are you today? I'm the same. I am exactly the same. Wonderful. So I thought uh, we might play some games with our uh, with our podcast attendees today. I could do Hello, that. Everybody. Hello. Thank you very much for joining us. As uh, most of you are probably aware, we are expanding uh, from audiobooks into makerspace and Steam initiative-based products, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got some awesome stuff. We do. We have some very cool uh, STEM makerspace type of uh, interactive games. Uh, absolutely, and that's what we want to cover with you today. Specifically, are the games because we've been reading a lot on the listservs because we do follow your listservs, your listservs to see what's going on, and uh, we're seeing a lot of chatter. About, um, about board games and such. Right. And uh, with the product that we offer uh, supporting uh, Steam initiatives, um, we wanted to give you kind of the lowdown on some of the products that are available to you. Uh, some of this is so new, it's not even on our website yet, but it will be soon. Um, so and getting I, in more by the day, so. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Keep your eyes open. Fun stuff, and what a great job. We get to play with toys for a living. <laughs> okay, so do you want to uh, jump in and start with the first one? Yeah, what do I do? What do I do? What do I, how about if I do this? Blocks Love Rock. It. Love Blocks Rock. Uh, me too. It is, uh, it is a basically competitive structural block play. Uh, they have actually proven via MRIs. Uh, that this assists with spatial thinking and mental rotation. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What we can do is this game uh, is set up. It's not a game. It's a learning tool. It's set up based on cards. With these cards, they give you various designs that you're going to recreate uh, competing with another person. And those designs, you can build them in a three-dimensional space. So you can take these blocks based on a card you will either build your you build like vertically or horizontally, horizontally uh, to match the card and and battle against your your arch nemesis sitting next to me <laughs> and the first one that completes it Rings the, rings the bell. So, based on these cards, and I'm sure that Evan, in his uh, his wonderful way, will be able to uh, get a close up on this. But these cards give you uh, a listing of the various design builds of varying uh, intricacies based on the age level. So, and everyone knows that kids love to play with colored blocks. And I'm working with uh, a library that is using the rocks blocks in her. Um, uh, outreach programs when she goes to the nursing homes ah, because yeah. you know they're simple they're easy to handle for uh, hands that may have some difficulty and it does help uh, with the cog cognitive thinking process uh, to kind of try to keep those minds a little a little more sharp and this is good for uh, ages two and four up uh, heavily promoted on NPR I hear this all the time in NPR when I'm driving into work so uh, a wonderful wonderful game and I believe it's locally made it is it is. It's made right here in Indianapolis, Indiana. So with the um, circuit maze game, uh, it develops the critical thinking skills of uh, logical reasoning and uh, planning. Uh, it helps to uh, give a rudimentary um, basic training on uh, understanding how uh, currents and electricity works. And it uses real circuits and pieces. Uh, there are 60 challenges from beginner to expert. And when I first opened this game, I thought piece of cake. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, you know, with the basic cards and such, you know, you start to learn the game. You get up into the expert challenges and, and they are they are really challenging. So basically, the game card will tell you what pieces you need to place on the board and what additional pieces you're going to need to um, uh, to finish the board. So you see the pieces that are laid out for you and the challenge is to get the yellow light to light up. To make it work. Yes, yeah, exactly. Work. And uh, so, you know, you, you end up, you know, putting all the little pieces into place until everything lines up the way that it's supposed to and the red light comes on because the circuit is completed and the... Uh, the answers 
to all of the riddles are on the back of the card. So uh, we really, really love this game. It is uh, for a single player, or of course you can do it in collaboration, and it's recommended for ages 8 and up. And by the way, uh, this won the Creative Child Magazine Game of the Year uh, for, uh, as, a, uh, as a toy finalist. Very cool. Yep, so it comes with great recommendations. Uh, how about how about Robot Turtles? Love Robot Turtles. Robot Turtles. What can you say about that? It is a game that teaches basic coding concepts for uh, preschool and up. I mean, this is for the this is for the young ones, uh, for four and up. It has two to five players. Uh, it uh, it has a game board, and it basically teaches it teaches coding via a game board. Uh, as you move your turtle mm -hmm. through a series of moves uh, with your cards uh, to get to the jewel, uh, it uh, it is a winner of teachers. Uh, the teachers uh, pick award for Scholastic Magazine. Uh, again, NPR, uh, Bloomberg. It is at one point was the largest, the most uh, uh, followed Kickstarter game of all time. Oh, excellent! So hugely popular, uh, and it, it, and again, it teaches uh, preschoolers the very concept and rudimentary, rudimentary ideas of of computer programming. Excellent, and it's never too young to get them started, right? Okay, now, of course, we're not going to be able to go through all of the games individually or because we, you know, we have a time crunch here. So we're just going to move on and uh, give you some of the basics. <clears throat> this is called, <clears throat> pardon me, this is called Hacker. And with a name like Hacker, you know the kids are going to be interested. It is a STEAM uh, education game. Um, you learn programming principles. Uh, it builds uh, reasoning and uh, planning skills as well as core programming principles. Uh, it has 120 challenges uh, from beginner to expert. Um, it can be used as a, a single player game or you can work in collaboration. Um, you know, basically two to four players <clears throat> uh, ages 10 and up. Um, and um, anytime you want any information on any of these games, you want some more detailed information, just give us a call and we'll make sure and send you a link so that you can actually see some of these games in action. And eh? the cool thing about Hacker is you have three different challenges. You can be either the hacker, you can be the programmer, the engineer, and there are 40 different challenges for each one of those. So there's 40 hacker challenges, 40 engineer challenges, 40 programmer challenges for a total of 120, which goes from very basic to fairly complex. Excellent. All right, um, let's do Sums in Space. Uh, Sums in Space is one of the games that we featured in our space crate with our Makerspace in a Crate leasing program. And if you're not familiar with our Makerspace in a Crate leasing program, please give us a call. Uh, let's have a conversation. It is absolutely incredible and you get so much with it. Uh, and we're, uh, we're happy to uh, provide that program to help support uh, um, steam initiatives at your library in a great way to try a lot of products without making a huge purchase. But anyway, back to sums in space. Uh, this solidifies first grade math skills um, <clears throat> with uh, addition and subtraction using numbers zero through nine. So you learn comparing numbers greater than, less than, equal to, and um, learning odd and even numbers. Right. So it's a great introduction to try to get kids interested in math. There are three difficulty levels um, to grow with the child. So as they progress with their math skills, you know, they can continue to be challenged as they move along. It's intended for two to four players ages five and older. And it keeps uh, our heroes from being sucked into a black hole while they're mining crystals. So yeah, there's little tokens that you collect as you go through the game. I really wish that we had more time to spread everything out and really give you a detailed look at everything. Unfortunately, time does not permit. Okay, we have the, uh, the Codemaster program, Programming Logic Game. Uh, this one is, uh, again, programming concepts using tokens, uh, using cards. It is from ages 8 to, uh, eight to adult. It's really a single-player game. Uh, but uh, it's really cool, uh, and it, it gets you going with the coding concepts at a little more advanced uh, level than we talked about earlier 
with our turtle. Right, exactly. And, um, you know, uh, the bulk of these games, with the exception of the um, um, the uh, maze, um, are, are, are standard board games, you know, so there's no electronics and so on and so forth. It's all about just stimulating the thought process so that you get the beginning concepts of coding and so on. But at that, it's even pretty intense. I mean, this, this goes up to 60 levels. Yeah. So it is a very intensive game. Yeah. And a lot of fun. Um, we, I've played with many of these games, and I can personally endorse them. Um, Escape Room. Uh, this particular escape room is uh, the mystery at Stargazer's Manor. Who doesn't love an escape room? I, I love escape rooms. And it's a great way to get the whole family involved. Uh, you find clues, you solve puzzles, and you have to escape the room before time runs out. So you do need a timer for this game. Uh, it teaches um, critical reasoning and logical deduction. Collaboration. Um, Exactly. Yeah, you have to work as a team to try to get everyone out of the room. So you just follow the story and the story challenges. You unlock the clues as you go and you unravel the mystery. Um, it is intended for three to eight players, uh, ages 10 years old and up. And it takes about 90 minutes uh, to, to do this game, 90 minutes or so. And we do have other escape room games uh, in the pipeline. Uh, so this particular one is at Star uh, Stargazer's Manor. Lots of fun. Uh, you can even encourage them to get costumes, um, you know, set the mood when you're playing the game. This is, um, a, a, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, brain teaser style game. Uh, the last game that we wanted to show you today, although this is not the sum and total of the games that we have to offer, like I said, we're working with the time constraint. This is Mole Rats in Space, uh, which again we featured in our uh, Makerspace in a Crate space-themed crate. Uh, this is a climbing and sliding game. Um, it has undertones of Candyland. There you go. So you better you better expand on that. Undertones of Candyland. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So uh, it's for two to four players, um, ages seven and up, uh, and basically the concept of the game is that the uh, players work together to help the mole rats gather the materials that they need to get uh, off, uh, uh, you know, to get into the rocket and get launched off. It's all for one, one for all. You're working as a team. Mm -hmm. You go down as a team or you win as a team. Right. And uh, there's, you know, the little, um, um, there's snakes, you know, that you're trying to avoid. And the snakes can use the chutes and ladders as well. And not only is this an opportunity for collaboration, there's a separate style game on it where you're actually working competitively to be the first one to be able to make it to the escape pod. So there's several different directions that you can come with this particular game. Um, we are incredibly excited about this whole concept. And as I mentioned earlier in the podcast, we've been following a lot of libraries on uh, the library listservs that are looking at this. And we want you to know, as you notice, when we took the, um, uh, the Blocks Rocks, uh, first pulled it out for the presentation, we are also able to offer these in circulating bundle bags, canvas backed, clear front, uh, zipper top, ultra heavy duty, and uh, so you can either buy the games individually or you can package them together with the hanging bags. And the hanging bags are also available for individual sale. So if you've already got product at your library that you would like to put into a circulating collection, please know that you can get these from us and they're available in two different sizes. All right, so that's, that's the it. Colin Skinny. I feel like we really How'd we to do? I think we did pretty good. Okay, I think right we made on. it. I think we made it. I, I feel like we had to kind of rush through it, but we wanted to offer you the widest variety of products uh, that we could in the 15 minutes or so that we have available to us in the podcast. So the most important thing we'll say to you through this entire thing is you can feel comfortable in calling us and having a conversation about anything that we do here at TEI. And we promise no pressure, no hassle, no sales pitch, no kidding. Uh, we're, we are thrilled uh, to introduce and be a part of the whole Maker and STEAM initiative movement. Uh, we are TEI Landmark, where we teach, engage, and inspire. Give us a call at 800-850-1701, or you can reach us via email at podcast at teilandmarkaudio.com. Thanks so much for stopping and playing along with us today. We appreciated your time. See you next time. Bye -bye.